We've created the delivery, we've seen the back order, now let's do the rescheduling. First of all, for the material, I'm going to put in some more stock of the material 3098 so uh, it will work. I'm going to put in some stock, save it, and now let's have a look at the stock levels. So for this material, I've just put in some new stock. You can see we have an extra quantity here, uh, more than enough to to fill our back order. Now I'm going to run the rescheduling program V underscore V2. Now before we start you can see that rescheduling program has lots and lots of different values and variables. I'm not going to go into deep down into detail on this because if not we'll be here forever. Yeah? Um, if you're really interested on in how rescheduling works there is another I've created another video uh, about re, uh, ATP and rescheduling uh, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to go in detail here but if not we're going to be here for the next 10 hours. Let's execute uh, rescheduling in simulation mode for this plant and this material and you can see here it's proposing to change the quantity from the 5 to the 10. Um, and, and this screen is a little bit difficult to understand at the start so uh, let's take our time to have a look at it. Okay when remember so when we created the sales order that was on back order it had two items on it and the second one looked at the total lead time and said okay the material is available after the total lead time that's where you can have the extra five now before that lead time that extra 20 days I have put in some stock right so when it ran rescheduling it said oh I have now some stock I can actually allocate this five to the sales order that was out out in the future before. Now I will allocate it five and I'll change the material availability date to today because I have some stock. And because the material availability date is today, that means my picking time can be today, my goods issue can be today, and so forth. So that's what the screen is telling us. It's saying you, you, I confirmed 5 before, now I can fully confirm 10 and out of that the 5 I've moved to today because I now have stock. Now let's go ahead and uh, oh, let's just go into the sales order quickly just to make sure as you can see the schedule line has this future date with the future quantity so now let's go back into the, into the rescheduling program let's run it in non-simulation mode Execute, yes, okay, and as you can see now, the system has allocated that extra five to the sales order, yeah, uh, and the schedule line now has been updated. So we've done the rescheduling, now let's create the balance delivery. So against the same sales order, I'm going to create a new delivery, and as you can see, the balance is just five right because this is what has been allocated uh, via the rescheduling I'm going to pick and I'm going to do the PGI um, and now let's go back into the sales order and look at the delivery status so in the sales order we go and if I go to just to check yep it's still blank uh, okay delivery status you can now see that the delivery status is fully complete. It's completed because I've shipped five in the first delivery, I ship five in the another delivery, now no more deliveries can be created. And the system now says that this is, has been fully completed and from a delivery perspective can be closed, i.e. no more back orders. So if I now take this delivery and I then use VF01 and create the invoice here, you can see the quantity is for five. Yeah. So what has happened is we have an invo we have a delivery. We created an invoice from that delivery, and the system is only copying the the shipped amount into the invoice. Yeah. And this would happen almost every single day or every week or whatever it is. As you ship it to the customer, you then invoice the quantity that you shipped. So let's have a quick look at the mass delivery creation. I think this is slightly important as well. Why is this important? Well, 
in most cases we wouldn't create a delivery one by one we would use this mass transaction and the first question is how would we select the correct deliveries or the correct sales orders to be converted into a delivery and we do this right by using the delivery creation date so here's how it works every time you do a rescheduling if the material is in stock the system will reschedule that schedule line it will then say that the date in which the delivery must be created will be changed to the current day or maybe one or two days in the future whatever it is but it will redetermine two key things when the material is available and when the delivery should be created which is the delivery creation day and this is what we're going to use in the mass delivery creation screen we always create uh, or we always select sales orders where they should be created by default only for today now some businesses want to create some for tomorrow that's okay that's a business decision but that's how we drive uh, back order rescheduling we run the rescheduling it then has the correct dates it determines what deliveries have to be created today we then run the mass delivery creation program we put the delivery creation date as today and the system will then cr select the correct schedule lines from the sales orders now let's go to the sales order I just want to show you the schedule line uh, for the sales order that we created before in our examples now it's been complete but I just wanted to show you where to find the delivery creation date if I go to the schedule line I double click on my schedule line here I click on shipping you can see here the delivery date and but notice it has the delivery creation date and that is the field uh, that it's updated through rescheduling and that is the field that we will pick up uh, in our mass delivery creation program in order to determine uh, which schedule lines to pick and to be converted into a delivery.